Welcome to Hook and Barrel. I'm your host, Captain Quinn. This is your co host. Look alive. We're dead. Thank you for your life. The best way to respect our planet is to honor our role within it, which is why I am setting out on a journey to hunt and fish for my food, out of appreciation for the natural world and the animals that give their lives so I can continue to live mine. I'm Captain Quinn, welcome to Hook and Barrel. This trip really was my last chance to put wild meat in the freezer for my family for the upcoming winter. I had bought several tags and had yet to punch a single tag. I had spent lots of time looking and looking and looking. Looking for animals, looking at the views, but mainly looking like an idiot. My good friend Roderick Brown had also come up short so far this hunting season and was looking to top up his meat supply as well. Rod makes his living as a chainsaw carver in northern BC, and we are both raising families up here and have become drawn to hunting as a fun, adventurous way to provide healthy wild meat for them. Uh, the thing that drew me into hunting was just being able to put uh, different food other than fish on the table, and I knew where it came from, and uh, yeah, so I struck out a couple times earlier in the year, uh, hunting with Quinn, and called me up and said there is a chance to get out to Haida Kauai to go after deer and, and so I was jumped all over it. I was pretty worried the whole time that I would fail again <laughs> uh, and that we would come home and have to be um, you know humiliated by the fact that we brought nothing with us and we spent that time and we're crappy hunters we're not very good providers so going into it uh, I was exceptionally nervous, but also really excited for the new experience to be learning new things with uh, some, a good buddy of mine. Formerly known as Queen Charlotte's, Haida Gwaii consists of a group of islands roughly 100 kilometers off the northwest coast of British Columbia. Since its origins, these islands have been a wildly remote and mysterious place, but development over the last century or so has largely put this place on the map for tourists outdoor enthusiasts, hunters, and fisher folk alike. Sitka mule deer were first introduced to the islands of Haida Gwaii in 1901 and again in 1925 to give islanders a fresh meat source. This was right around the same time a native population of Dawson caribou went extinct. With no natural predators, these deer thrived and quickly became overabundant. These deer on average are smaller than most but are well renowned for their delicious flavor. Hunting has reduced their numbers near populated areas, but their numbers are still high enough to merit possession limit of five per person. We hope to fill our limit this trip while exploring this rugged wilderness. When sighting your rifle in, bring ear protection, because my ears are ringing. Let's go see if I hit any kind of paper. My hopes are low. <laughs> my hopes are high. My hopes are high. My expectations are low. So I've fired three groups now. The first one, I managed to hit paper here, here, and here. 
The second one I managed to hit paper here, here, and then I don't know where else, I didn't hit paper. And the third group, which in theory is supposed to be your best, well, should be my best group because I've cited it in and I've practiced, I didn't hit paper once. So what this tells me is that I'm in trouble. I'm in big trouble. The deer are safe. The deer are safe. BC Ferries. It's about an eight hour sail across Hackett Strait. Very, very dangerous waters. But I'm here to make sure that the captain of this ship gets us across safely. So I'll be checking in with him on the hour. Make sure he's not steering us into dangerous waters or or anywhere where there might be pirates. Um, I, th I think we'll get there safely. Well, we got rooms. I got us rooms. Sweet. So we can go kick back. It'll just be like being on the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Only we're not gonna sink. I'll make sure of that. It turns out that the captain and crew of BC Ferries were more than capable of making the crossing. And it's a good thing too, because I fell asleep during my night watch. 6.30 a.m. Just arriving in Haida Gwaii. Venturing into the unknown. Try to shoot a bunch of deer, harvest a bunch of deer, to put uh, meat in the freezer for our families. Got off the ferry and then you have to kind of drive, drive in to the spot where we're planning on hunting and setting up our camp. We ventured deep into the backcountry and set up base camp in a backwoods cabin, a place to rest, dry off, spin some yarns, and hopefully hang our meat. As he gets on that train, it's just another dollar. It's just another day. Coffee is essential to these trips. Absolutely essential. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> about the people oh no they just get in the way swear goodbye to papa as he gets on that train it's just another dollar After topping up the firewood supply, it was time to go see if we could stir up some action. Each of us are allowed to harvest five deer, any of which can be antlered or antlerless. Well, we had a rough idea of where to go, but we just decided that we'd just drive around uh, and explore new area until something happened. Day. It's not about the 
Things can go from like, I don't know, discouraging to overwhelmingly exciting in a matter of seconds. Only a true friend lets his friend pack out a deer through a cut block. Oh, no need. Yeah. We're walking these blocks and we're glassing the blocks and we're kind of spooking some stuff off the fringe and then I blow the old the whistleblower here and they seem to stop and give us a shot and lord knows we need as many shots <laughs> as we can get but let's uh we'll gut it uh maybe we'll just quickly walk to the end of the road see if we can rustle something else up and then we got a long drag back to the truck yeah reach in rip out all the guts you gotta be careful not to hit the piss sack or the shit sack, obviously. So you just go in here. You almost think we knew what we were doing. All right, well. Start dragging this thing back. Sounds good. You'd look and you, you're probably looking right at one, but you couldn't see it. And then it, you'd see an ear flick or a tail flick. You start to get tuned into it. And then you'd see two or three deer either kind of standing there or they'd be running off and then you'd have to get to a knee and brace yourself and try to get a shot in if you, if you had one. When it happens, it happens quickly. Um, sometimes the deer are very cooperative and they'll just give you broadside and stand there. Other times they just book it and they're gone. It sure felt good to punch a few tags and load some deer into the truck, knowing that they would feed our families throughout the winter. We managed to harvest four deer the first day and made our way back to camp feeling proud. Now it was time to hang and skin our deer, get some rest, and prepare for the final day of our hunting trip. We put a hard day's work in trying to get these things and then get back to camp. It's pitch black. It's only 4.30. Hunting in the winter, it's nice, it's clean, it's cold, it's snowy, but limited daylight hours, so you gotta make the most of them. You gotta make the most of them. In this case, we're making the most of the headlights. Despite the long night of hard work, we found ourselves riled up and ready to go at the crack of dawn the next morning, with the hope of harvesting a few more deer. After seeing all the deer we saw last night, I thought there'd be a lot more here this morning. They must still be sleeping or something. 
Can you make this sound with your just your hands? No way. <laughs> what do you get about this one? Uh, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here they come now. <laughs> it worked. They're just running, sprinting down the hillside. I think every deer we've seen so far, they've seen us first. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to stop them with one of these and then see if you can get a shot away, but... There's a buck right there, there's a doe down by that tree, and there's another doe over here. The end of our trip was filled with a tremendous sense of accomplishment. We managed to harvest eight deer and share many smiles and laughs. It was now time to head home to cut and wrap our animals and eat some of this delicious meat. There is always a tremendous amount of work that goes into a hunting trip, but it's good work. It's wholesome, hard, and satisfying. And the more you work for something, the more you appreciate it in the end. Please. Do you want to carry that over? Sam, did he How were they? Were they the best? There's a back strap. We got what? Like, that'll be good steaks. Ribs.
need all that? What is that? Do you know what this is? That's deer. That's deer. What, Tail? You're gonna eat it all up? Yeah. Do you like it? It's sad, but it's good. also good because we're eating it. It's really easy to go to the grocery store and buy a steak that you have no from an animal that you have no connection to, but to go spend a week in the bush and stalk these animals, shoot these animals, hike these animals out, gut them, hang them, skin them, butcher them, wrap them. There's so much work and that goes into that, and the more work you put into it, the more you appreciate it and the better it tastes in the end. And to see my kids uh, sort of light up with curiosity when they saw the deer hanging on the meat hooks or they saw us cutting them or they saw it in a, in a frying pan and we're eating it and they're asking questions like where it came from and I'm sharing them stories and they're really into it. And I think that ultimately, in the end, that's kind of what drives me to, to hunt and fish. Thanks for watching Hook and Barrel. Check out the rest of our videos, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.